Hello and welcome to City Focus. I'm Diane Gonzalez. We live in the largest city in the world named for Abraham Lincoln, and we celebrate that every year with a birthday celebration. The City and Humanities Nebraska are presenting the 14th annual Abraham Lincoln Birthday Celebration Sunday, February 16th at Southwest High School. This is a free event for the whole family. It's a lot of fun, but it's also very educational. Now, one of the highlights will be a performance by actor Fritz Klein as President Lincoln. Klein is one of the nation's foremost Lincoln portrayers. Klein lives in Springfield, Illinois, where he performs at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. You may have seen him on National Geographic Television, Discovery Channel, History Channel, Smithsonian Channel, or C-SPAN. He was also in History Channel's Only in America with Larry the Cable Guy last August. He's also appeared in the New York Times and US Today, USA Today. You can check out Fritz's website at lincolninstitute.com. It's great to have Fritz back as part of our celebration. Another highlight will be the showing of a new 30-minute film about President Lincoln's Civil War Balloon Corps. Now joining me to discuss the film is Terry Lowe. Terry is a city employee. He's a member of the Celebration Committee. But most importantly for our conversation today, he is a descendant of Thaddeus Lowe. He was the Balloon Corps' chief aeronaut. And Terry, you have a great collection of items related to this historic effort. How long have you been researching um, Thaddeus Lowe and his balloons? Well, it's been almost 35 years now, but uh, it came about when I was doing genealogy research for the family and stumbled into this gentleman as part of an almost American history, but it's somewhat forgotten time. It is, really. Um, a lot of people don't know about this. It's a, it's a little known chapter. Uh, tell us, um, just give us some, a little bit of history. How did this Balloon Corps come about? Well, the Balloon Corps came about because of the Civil War. Actually, Thaddeus Lowe, with some of the material you see behind us, wanted to be the first to do a transatlantic balloon flight. And in that process, over the years, he mastered how to use hydrogen, hydrogen ballooning. And at that time, he was preparing for that transatlantic flight and just a year or so after that, the Civil War broke out. Preparing for that flight, though, the first secretary of the Smithsonian, Joseph Henry, encouraged him to do a short flight, a test flight first, from Cincinnati to go to the coast to prove the, uh, uh, the safety of it, because he didn't want to just try the Atlantic crossing. So when Joseph Henry um, got him to do that, he left Cincinnati proving that there was a jet stream that would go in the opposite direction. So he made sure that the wind was blowing to the west when he took off to prove that there was an easterly jet stream. Well, little did he know that uh, when he went up and he traveled very high and very fast, they ended up landing in Unionville, South Carolina just two weeks after they had seceded from the Union. He was captured and actually noted as the first prisoner of war in the Civil War. That's amazing. Yeah. How did he get how did he get out of South Carolina then to help with the war effort? Uh, interesting story in itself. The the fact that he had been uh, he was called Professor Thaddeus Sabisky Constantine Lowe's his full name had a really mouthful. Mom had a bent with names. Um, was known, captured, put in jail, but the uh, president of the University of Columbia recognized him as a scientist and wrote a note for safe passage to go all the way back to the Union. Little did they know, too, that he would have such a significant impact on the Civil War. Then how did uh, President Lincoln become aware of this, these balloons and the potential they might have for helping in battles? Well, there was a number of aeronauts, and that's what they called themselves, uh, that were vying for a military position. Thaddeus went to Washington, D.C., and ironically did a demonstration of the value of, of military ballooning where the Space and Air Smithsonian sits today. In fact, he has a standing uh, display of Thaddeus Lowe's binoculars and that type of stuff in the museum. He, at the last minute, decided to take up a key uh, telegraph operator with him. So a young man jumped in the basket, they strung the cable, he went up to a certain altitude, and it's the first time uh, a telegraph was sent from an aerial observation platform, and it was sent to President Lincoln, who was in the White House. You probably saw the movie Lincoln, where he spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in the telegraph office. Right. What people don't realize is even back in that day, the 
up to second battle reporting was happening because the ballooning was connected to telegraph wires so they would be getting up to second um, movement of troops and how the battle was going so anyhow he this was a demonstration to prove to the president that there was value to have him in the balloon to have a balloon core so he went up and he sent a telegraph message telling him how far out he could see and you wouldn't think it was a big deal to say you can see 7 to 15 to 20 miles out, but you've got to remember the Potomac River, Virginia is right on the other side. You know, there was a lot of concern that the Confederates were going to come back across the river and take the capital. Well, when you have a 7 to 15 mile view of troop movements, that's a full day's warning of where people are going to come. So you can be prepared well in advance of them arriving by able to spying that height at that height. Well, tell us about his battle experience. Well, battle experiences, there were many. Uh, there were thousands of, of uh, ascents. Uh, Thaddeus was in quite a few of them. Uh, in fact, the, the History Channel did a, uh, uh, an hour documentary on Lincoln and the flying spying machine. And they even tout in there that, that the Battle of Fair Oaks, where our troops had been separated between a river, there was a storm and they were actually separated so there were three corps on one side and two on the other and the confederates saw this is right close to richmond i mean they got within miles of taking the confederate confederate capital this was called the peninsula campaign and general george mcclellan led that battle but since the troops got separated the confederates were going to kind of come in and overwhelm the ones that were stranded on the other side of the river because thaddeus was able to give them up to minute movement of troops, they were able to build a kind of a bridge, I guess you want to call that. And that was considered a, if they had overrun the troops there, the war could have been over because it was a straight shot into Washington, D.C. That could have been a disaster. So he's kind of credited in that first battle of being able to direct the troops and the artillery to, to uh, have a more accurate bombardment. So how important did the Corps end up being then to the whole war effort? It sounds like it had a pretty major role. Well, it did. There was, there was wide acceptance with McClellan. He was the champion of the Balloon Corps. And there were a number of generals, very noted generals, that, that were very uh, much wanting to have a balloon attached to their, to their corps. But there were a number of others that didn't. In fact, this is a, or this is a handwritten note uh, from Abraham Lincoln to General Winfield Scott. He was the Secretary of War at the time. He was a famous Mexican War hero, but he was quite elderly, really not up to the task of a civil war. And as Lowe would keep going back to him to tell him, I have this introduction from the president, I'm supposed to talk to you about starting a balloon corps, he wouldn't see him. He just refused to see him. I'm asleep or I'm having lunch. And it took Thaddeus after the Battle of Bull Run the president asked him how come he didn't, wasn't at the battle. And he was telling him, well, I couldn't get uh, the thing to start. So Lincoln actually walked with him to the, de to the War Department. And of course, everybody salutes and comes to attention. And this, this note actually says, will Lieutenant uh, General Scott please see Professor Lowell one more time about his balloons? And that's when he announced to him that he was going to be the chief aeronaut of the Union Balloon, Co balloon Corps. Now this was a fairly dangerous position to be in. Didn't you tell me once that he was probably the most shot at man in the Civil War? Actually that was Carl Sandburg said <laughs> that, that he was the most shot at man in the Civil War. Thaddeus understood a uh, trajectory and distance and that, so he usually would position his balloons out of fire, but it doesn't mean that they still didn't take pot shots. They would even take their cannons and dig holes so the tongues would sit down so they would fire further up. Uh, none of the balloons were ever shot down, none of the aeronauts, there were seven balloons in all at one point in time, uh, never were shot, but there were a few uh, pieces of lead balls and stuff in the basket, but uh, nobody ever was injured. Now, you mentioned this, the History Channel has done a piece on this, but there is a new movie. We're going to show uh, the new movie. It's about a 30-minute film. <coughs> Excuse me, 30-minute film. We're going to be showing that at the Abraham Lincoln birthday celebration twice. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about Intrepid. The Intrepid was, uh, was Thaddeus' favorite balloon. It was the larger of the seven. Uh, it would let him get higher, faster, better altitude, uh, the ability to direct artillery fire, 
it was just his favorite balloon. So um, the, the Intrepid itself, and this is the DVD for that, and again, this is available, but uh, we'll be showing it at the celebration. This is a combination of bringing the history back to life. The Genesee Country Village Museum in Mumford, New York, actually created a new Intrepid. And it's, it's life-size. You can actually take a flight in it. I was able to do that on its inaugural flight with my son. Um, so it's a, it's a combination of history and how they built the balloon and how they got it available at the museum. Well, we have a clip from the film now, and so let's take a look at the new film, Intrepid. On June 17, 1861, shortly after the start of the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln received an extraordinary telegram and went to look out his White House window. What he saw and what happened next significantly influenced the course of the war. 150 years later in Mumford, New York, the Genesee Country Village and Museum is reviving this compelling piece of American history. And Terry, Terry, you also have a cameo in the movie. Yeah, that was very kind of them to do that. <laughs> it, it was kind of a long trip, but uh, towards the end, yeah, they actually, because I am a, a descendant of Thaddeus, uh, was gracious enough to put us both in that. Now, in addition to the film, which is going to be shown at 1 and 4.30 at the Abraham Lincoln Birthday Celebration, Terry will have his extensive collection there. This is just a small part of it. How many pieces are in your collection related um, to the Balloon Corps? You know, uh, I have a collection of about a dozen different books written about Thaddeus Lowe and a few other items like this, uh, uh, some photographs, some Brady photographs, that type of thing. Well, and then you're going to be there actually to talk to people about Oh, absolutely. I, do you th how, are you excited about the, the film generating new interest in that? I, th I think it will. I think when, when folks see uh, the reconstruction of the balloon and what it did, and then its connection to World War I some 50 years later, when ballooning started in, in, uh, in, in 1861, it only lasted until the summer of 1863. There was a lot of turmoil between military bureaucracy and that, and they finally that the Battle of Chancellorsville was the last time they used ballooning, unfortunately. In fact, the Civil War magazine even stated in there, the air war, the Union squandered its greatest advantage. <laughs> so here's Thaddeus in a basket going up in Fair Oaks. So there were opportunities there, but not everybody uh, could agree with it. It was mm -hmm. the Signal Corps that had them. In World War I, the Signal Corps now affectionately called the balloonist uh, the eyes of the Army. And all of those young men were trained in Omaha, Nebraska. I had no idea, but Omaha, Nebraska has a definite connection to ballooning uh, that was done for World War I. So all the men that served in France were trained in Omaha. Well, you, as you said, you've been doing research now for over three decades. You continue to find out new information. Yes, I do. Now, the film goes on at the end and talks about Thaddeus Lowe and what he did after the Civil War. He was really a fascinating and extremely brilliant man. Yeah, he had a very fertile mind. He, he was, this was in his 30s when he was doing the Civil War ballooning, but he also had a patent uh, on uh, commercial ice making. So if you wanted to ever know who invented your refrigerator, it was Thaddeus Lowe. The first meat products from Texas to New York were shipped on a ship, a refrigerated ship. Same thing with railways. Uh, later in his life, um, he, because of his knowledge, his, his chemistry knowledge, uh, the United States and Europe both lit and heated their homes with the patent that he had for uh, gas works. He understood the production of gas. And then at the end of his life, he moved to Altadena, right by Pasadena, California, and there's a mount there called Mount Low, right next to Mount Wilson, where he built an incline railway system, an electric railway system that would take the Californians up to the mountains where they could be sunny in the day and snowing in the afternoon if they just took a train up there, built five-star hotels, almost a precursor to Disney World, different venues. Uh, one uh, was a, uh, a German chateau, the Ye Old Tavern is what it's called, and at the very top of the mountain there was a, an observatory and a zoo. and. So he, was, he just lived a very full life. That's, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Terry, for sharing this with us and look forward to seeing you at the celebration and seeing the film again. I've seen it once, but I'm looking forward to seeing it again. 
Again, the film Intrepid will be shown at 1 o'clock and 4.30 p.m. at the Abraham Lincoln Birthday Celebration. Again, it is coming up Sunday, February 16th at Southwest High School. You'll find the complete schedule on the website, city website, lincoln.ne.gov. We'll also have music for dancing from the Smith Family Band of Hastings. We'll have uh, local favorite Chris Sayer back. He's been, he's performed at every Abraham Lincoln birthday celebration so far. We'll have kids activities, historical exhibits, free refreshments, including birthday cake. Of course, area Civil War reenactors in their authentic uniforms will be mingling with the crowd and answering questions. It's a great afternoon and it's all free thanks to the support of ne Humanities Nebraska and our sponsors. So we hope to see you there at the Abe Lincoln Birthday Celebration. Thank you very much for joining us for this edition of City Focus.